and honor to have one of the leading university not only in Canada, but also all over the world, the University of Western Ontario. Over the past years, the University of uh, Western Ontario is one of the most important partners, and we are always happy to send our quiet Egyptian student to study there. The University of Western Ontario has made a strong impression in the most recent QS World uh, University ranks. Students say that in terms of being a great combination of community, social and academic experience, Western University is your best choice. Overall, the university is one of the best 15 universities in Canada, especially in the field of social science, business, medicine, and engineering, of course. Uh, please note that at the end of the today meeting, there will be a session for question and answer. If you have any question, please write it down in the chat box. Now we are pleased to have Mr. Hisham Ahmed, General Director of Dispatch and Academic Supervision Department, Central Department of Egyptian Mission affiliated to the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research in Egypt, who will present to us the Egyptian State Plan for Grants and Mission. Welcome, Mr. Hisham, the floor is yours. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, thank you very much for uh, such an introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure today to be with uh, Western University. Uh, it's our first time to be here. And uh, let me share with you my presentation. Actually, the Ministry of Higher Education and Research and Scientific Research uh, concentrated in the Central Department of Mission. Um, its main role is to design and organize the announcement or scholarship announcement annually. Uh, after authentication from our uh, big boss, which is the CDM Executive Committee. Uh, CDM Executive Committee is consisting of um, Supreme Council of Universities, uh, headed by our minister, uh, having um, a lot of uh, uh, professors, uh, and they are the, the one to decide the scholarships and the grants and its distribution and the approval of the announcement. CDM announced twice annually, uh, usually late January and late June. We are usually concerned with the specialties, the main specialties that's been um, approved by the Supreme Council of Universities, as well as the priority areas that will impact the Egyptian uh, economic rules. And that's our evoke, I mean, to have um, these announcements on uh, annually basis. What we are covering, the scholarship types that we are providing is uh, PhD, full PhD up to four years, and one year channel system, we are providing also six months is post of trade scholarship and up to two years uh, master degree scholarships. So our uh, grants are, or our scholarship are, uh, are divided into uh, certificate programs, which includes the master as well as the PhD and uh, the non-degree uh, programs, which include the, the one year child system or the joint supervision system as well as the six months uh, postdoctorate. However, we are increasing our undergraduate program nowadays, uh, but on very specific um, uh, measures. What our scholarships covers, in the PhD, we are covering the scholar with two round tickets and the monthly stipend we are paying the tuition. We are providing their medical health insurance. And of course, we are giving them one month paid leave during the PhD duration. Uh, also, we are providing book allowance as well as clothes allowance. And for the joint supervision, we are doing the same. One round trip ticket, a monthly stipend for almost like 12 months. We are paying the research fees and we are providing them with health insurance and we're giving them 15 days paid leave and book allowance and closes allowance. And as for the master degree and the postdoctorate, 
we are doing the same. In the Master V, also we are providing a one round trip ticket, monthly stipend for 12 months and research fees. However, if the master is two years, we are providing 24 uh, months uh, stipend. Um, also, we are providing health insurance, 15 days annually, uh, and book allowance and closing allowance. For the postdoc trade, just as around trip ticket, monthly stipend, as well as the medical insurance coverage. Now, for the specialty, this announcement is mainly concerned with the, the main 10 uh, core fields that we are dealing with. We are looking now for people to apply in the field of the energy, which includes, um, we, specific, um, we simplified a little bit because it's having a lot of uh, subsidiaries. So uh, it's mainly considered uh, through the College of Engineering and Science. And all this in disciplines affiliated with the research of developing solar and bioenergy. Uh, also water resources and medical and health sciences, agriculture and nutrition uh, science and environment. And the strategic industry techniques, the information communication and space technology, educational and learning development, investment, trade and transport, and the social and humanities sciences. These are the main core fields that we are interested for to have more applicant uh, this announcement to apply to. Now, our timeline uh, for this announcement, we already started the announcement by uh, March, uh, 21st of March, we start the announcement. The deadline of the announcement will be May 30. And we'll have eligibility check for almost like an, uh, a week. So it will end by June 6. And by July 2021, we'll start our technical evaluation to the proposal submitted by all the participants, as well as having their online interview. We are suggesting to have the results by August 2021. This is our announcement timeline. Uh, of course, we are delayed a little bit, two months. We are behind the schedule because our second announcement was supposed to be starting by uh, mid of June, but uh, this year is going to be delayed uh, till after um, finalizing the second part of uh, the current announcement. Okay, so once we have the results, the results usually it's been delivered to ECP, Egyptian Culture and Education Bureau in uh, Montreal for starting the placement procedures. ECP role to negotiate with the hosting universities and finalize the acceptance of all the participants. Usually um, there will be an, a correspondence between ECP and the participants themselves who already want the scholarship. And the participant has to fulfill all the requirements by the hosting university. Once they finish, the ECP confirm the final acceptance to CDM. Then CDM start to prepare a participant for traveling by finalizing their paperwork. Um, they're having the pre-travel orientation. Uh, and the other co related courses to their departure. Upon the finishing their pre-travel uh, procedures, we dispatch them to the hosting university to let ECP take the role then by monitoring and evaluation our participants. Thank you, that was uh, a quick uh, presentation to the current announcement and the uh, fields that we are looking to have more participants for. And here is our communication. You can, of course, our uh, website is cdm.edu.tg, and of course, our email and LinkedIn, as well as the YouTube channel. Dr. Okay, Ahmed, thank, thank, thank you very much. For yours. Thank you, Mr. Isham, for this uh, quick presentation. And um, 
Now I would like to welcome uh, Professor Ahmad Faudi, the cultural attaché uh, and the director of the Egyptian Culture and Educational Office. Professor Faudi will take us the, on the journey through the role of the Egyptian Culture and Educational Office in Montreal. Please, Dr. Faudi, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, hello, everybody. On behalf of the Egyptian Cultural and Educational Bureau in Canada, it is with my tremendous pleasure that I welcome you to such an important educational event and to thank you for being with us today. I am Dr. Ahmed Fauzi, the cultural attaché and director of the Bureau. I would like to express my deepest thanks to Dr. Ashraf El Azizi, head of the Egyptian Cultural Affairs and Missions Sector, Dr. Haysam Hamza, head of the missions sector, Mr. Hisham Mustafa, general director of the missions sector, and all other colleagues within the sector for their continuous support and fruitful cooperation. Special thanks to Dr. Ahmed Haikal and all other colleagues working in the Egyptian Cultural Bureau for their wonderful efforts. I would like also to express my gratitude to the University of Western, our esteemed partner, represented today by Professor Bretta Baron, Vice Provost and Associate Vice President International, and Dr. Ashraf El Damati, Professor at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Mr. Adrian Aguirre, International Sponsored Students Manager, and Mr. Matt Basley, Senior Director. A big thank you as well to our Egyptian PhD scholars, Mr. Safwat Ramadan and Mrs. El Shayma Ahmed, who are currently studying at the University of Western for volunteering to participate in today's presentation. Now, let me give you an overview of our uh, bureau. Our bureau is located in Montreal and it was established in the year 1986. It's currently located on the 10th floor in one place Ville Marie. It used to be on the 19th floor in the same building till October 2015. The main building, which is one place Ville Marie, was built in 1962. It is 188 meters and uh, in terms of height and 47 story office. Basically, uh, the role of the uh, Bureau uh, has two key uh, aspects, educational and cultural. In terms of educational uh, activities, the Bureau represents the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research in Canada. Uh, the Bureau aims to conduct agreements with uh, esteemed uh, Canadian universities, as well as to follow up on Egyptian uh, scholars in the Canadian universities and schools. Also, the Bureau uh, is in charge of doing some kind of authentication of educational documents for Egyptian scholars. In terms of the cultural uh, role, the Bureau arranges a number of Egyptian cultural events in order to reflect the Egyptian cultural uh, uh, image uh, to Egyptians as well as to uh, Canadians. Of course, we do operate in our uh, uh, bureau in line with Egypt's vision uh, 2030. And in this sense, our vision is to become Egypt's uh, preeminent cultural and educational hub in Canada. Uh, and in terms of the mission, we are a team passionately dedicated to fostering Egyptian cultural, educational, 
and scientific relations with our partners in Canada. We have three values, which are imagination, collaboration, and determination. Our team is composed of Dr. Ahmed Haikal, cultural attaché, Mrs. Heba Elmansi, administrative and financial attaché, Mr. Mustafa Shakib, executive secretary, Mrs. Marie Khouri, executive secretary, and myself, Dr. Ahmed Fauzi, cultural attaché and director. Now I will leave the floor to Mr. Mustafa Shakib, who will talk to you about certain procedures that scholars should consider before and after their arrival to Canada. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Um, student, they have to send to our office the letter from the supervisor. Then we can be able to send the financial support letter to the supervisor. And they have to fill the online application at the university. And after they fill the form, they may get the acceptance. Then they have to send it to us. Then we will send it to the CDM for the admission, final admission. Next, please. And after they arrive to Canada, they have to send to our office the photocopy of their passport, the photocopy of their visa, the exit stamp, and also they have to provide to our office the um, student bank account. This is a for, for term of the receiving their salary. And in case of the, for the insurance, in case of they are coming as a joint supervision or sabbatical, they have to um, join the insurance company. Thank you. Next, doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mustafa. Thank you very much to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fauzi. Thank you, Mr. Mustafa, for uh, this good presentation. Uh, and it is our pleasure now and honor to have today one of the elite Western professors, uh, Professor Ashraf Damati. Professor Damati is an Egyptian professor, graduated from Cairo University from the Faculty of Engineering, Department of Civil Engineer in 1986. During his academic career, Professor Damati has awarded several international prizes and recognition. Most recent, he has been elected as a fellow of the Canadian Academy of Engineering. Congratulations, uh, Professor Damati, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmed. It's it's my pleasure to be here today with uh, with all the um, esteemed. Uh, official of the uh, Egyptian Cultural Bureau, which uh, I, I respect a lot uh, because of their uh, tremendous effort they are putting in order to establish the connection between the Canadian universities and uh, the education environment in Egypt. And um, as Dr. Ahmed said, uh, uh, I, I reflect now on, I have been, I graduated from Cairo University a long time ago and um, I have been working at Western for 25 years now. And um, during that time, I had the luxury of supervising many, many Egyptian graduate students. So I went through my CV today and I counted them. And I found that I graduated 17 PhDs from Egypt. Currently I'm supervising another eight. And also I got graduated seven masters um, and supervising now about other three. So it's, it's a good number of, of graduate students from 10 different Egyptian universities. Uh, some of them came with their scholarships uh, through their mission. Others, I funded them from my research. And uh, definitely uh, those students, I, I had students from other countries as well. So we have quite a diverse group, but definitely the Egyptians represent a big portion of my, of my research team. And uh, those students, uh, very talented students, uh, I think any success I have achieved uh, in my academic career, uh, it's definitely because of those students. Uh, any award I receive, um, any achievement, and most importantly for me, my biggest accomplishments are two things. Uh, whatever we contribute to science and people benefit from it. And secondly, the success of my graduate students. 
those are the two real things that uh, make me very proud. So uh, uh, I am the chair of civil engineering. I'm very proud of civil engineering at Western. Uh, in many um, uh, ranking schemes, we are ranked as number one in Canada and one of the top 15 in the world. Uh, we have excellent research facilities. Uh, Western in general, it's a wonderful place, not because I'm working there, but actually the fact that many students, uh, many of my own students, uh, they want to stay at Western as, as long as possible. And they want to stay in London usually as long as possible. There's something strange about London, Ontario, specifically, that attract people to it. Um, uh, the um, the themes that were presented in, in, in my department, definitely I have to promote my department. This is a good occasion. Uh, we work on, on energy, on renewable energy. We work on water resources and we work on um, environment. So uh, yeah, definitely today, this is one of my best activities that I enjoy doing. It's talking to young people, trying to help young people uh, all over the world, but specifically from Egypt. I was in your situation uh, maybe 30 years ago, looking for um, uh, for ways to, to, to continue my graduate studies. So I, I really feel it. And uh, we are here to try to help you as much as we can. And um, we have a team from Worcester. Uh, we are very proud to have uh, Brita Barron. She is the Vice Provost and as always well Vice President International at Western. Um, very, very accomplished, experienced uh, person in the field of international collaboration. She had previous position, similar position in the University of Alberta and we are very fortunate to have here. She's originally from Germany. And uh, what's interesting is that she's very familiar with Egypt because she spent a few years in Egypt. Uh, but maybe at that time she was represented Germany, not, not Canada. But uh, now, now she, she's putting all her effort in order to, uh, in international activities at Western. So uh, without further ado, uh, first I, I, I forgot to mention Kulam uh, Bukhir for, for Ramadan, Ramadan Karim. I know how beautiful are the nights of Ramadan in Egypt. I do miss them. Uh, I'm, I'm still fasting here, and now you, you, you have the luxury, you have already eaten and drink. But uh, so now I, 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 I pass it to uh, Brita, and she's going to provide a presentation about West. Thank you, Professor Aldamati, and uh, thanks to uh, the Egyptian Study Mission. Uh, it's a great honor that we can uh, talk about Western here to so many interested uh, Egyptian students. We very much appreciate this opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, for Professor Aldamati. He has guided us and provided us with the appropriate direction in preparing for this meeting. Um, and thank you to all the participants. There are almost 200 of you. Uh, it is exciting to, to see that there's such interest in the opportunities that Western University here in Canada can offer. Indeed, um, I have a dual citizenship. I'm a Canadian citizen and a German citizen. I worked for 20 years of my life for the DAAD that some of you might have heard of the German Academic Exchange Service. And my first job in, in DAD was indeed being the director for the North African and Middle Eastern countries. So uh, I had a fantastic opportunity to learn about that part of the world and universities in that part of the world. And as I have said, I had a visit, ability to visit uh, Egypt at, at great length. And uh, I can say that was a life-changing experience for me. So I, I have a very special place for, for your beautiful country in my heart. Um, as to Western University, I uh, joined Western not too long ago. Um, and uh, part of the attraction of Western, uh, in, I have to say, was my own son. Um, he just graduated from Western University in April of last year. And in fact, from Ashraf's uh, faculty, he, is a, he did a dual degree. Uh, in mechatronic engineering and uh, computer sciences. And he right away uh, found a job 
with General Motors uh, Canada uh, and is now working for General Motors and, and very happily so. Uh, and, and in fact, due to COVID, we are still uh, uh, living in the same house that we hadn't lived together for six years and now we do. Uh, so I'm uh, particularly pleased uh, that uh, this job gave me the opportunity to reconnect with my son and uh, share time with him in a way that we hadn't been able. And he certainly had a fantastic time and his uh, promising career shows all the evidence of uh, the wonderful preparation that Western provided him in so many ways. So I wanna share with you a little bit about what we have to offer and why I think we think here as a team together with uh, Dr. Matt Basley and Adrian Aguirre, that uh, we really have uh, something very special for our international students to offer. Western is a super popular university with uh, Canadian students. Uh, it is actually very, very selective for undergraduate studies for, for Canadian uh, students. We think we are the most selective university in Canada for undergraduate studies on average, not for every single program, of course. But uh, it's a very elite institution in that sense that we really are uh, highly selective. Um, and we're proud of it. We're proud of these, these very high standards that we are able to maintain. Just a little bit of introduction to Canada. Um, a wonderful, beautiful country, uh, 38 million people growing. The second largest territory of any country in the world. Russia is the largest. Uh, 10 provinces, three territories, 96 universities and colleges. Uh, Canada has always been very proud of universities and colleges. This is a part of our story of our, of our development is we didn't want to fight wars and we didn't want to uh, conquer other people. We wanted to offer wonderful opportunities for people to live a, a healthy, happy life in Canada and universities and colleges play a crucial role. Uh, the, uh, as you probably know, it's a very, it's a country with open doors. 22% uh, of our uh, population, I'm one of them, uh, Ashraf is, is one of them, uh, and, and in fact, Edwin is one of them. Uh, we all were born in other countries and have made our, uh, have made Canada, Canada the country of our choice, our second home, uh, the, the, the place that we love to live and raise our families. Um, Canada has a very active immigration policy. It's the envy of many countries, even the US president. Uh, presidents have mentioned that Canada is an example in terms of how we handle immigration. It's very fair, it's very reliable, it's hard, but it's, it's, it's uh, still uh, committed to growing the country with uh, bringing in immigrants around 400,000 uh, per year. Um, so, Canada is an open country and a very diverse country. Um, we can go to the next one. Uh, we kind of talk about Canada a little more. We have to show you a few uh, pictures. This is of obviously the Niagara Falls, not too far from here. If you come here uh, to Western University on a weekend visit, you can easily go and see the falls. Canada offers excellent uh, quality of life. Our health care is uh, second to none in terms of quality and in terms of equity. Uh, it's health care for all, um, not selective health care. Uh, it's a very safe country. We have a very high, high life expectancy, one of the highest in the world. Uh, we are ranking 16th. Our average uh, age life expectancy is 83. Uh, in the United States is 79 years old and they only rank 46th in the world. So the United States has much bigger issues with uh, health and well-being than Canada has. Uh, we are protecting and we are a leader in terms of protecting the environment. Our country obviously has signed the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, we are, our country, our government promotes the carbon tax, and we are uh, very committed uh, in, in many, many ways, including in research, uh, to provide a safe and, and healthy environment for all and also for future generations. Uh, the country is enormously rich in, in natural resources, land, uh, land to grow, uh, food on, uh, water, minerals, uh, oil and gas, obviously, agriculture, 
uh, Canada alone, I, I read, could provide pretty much for the world's food needs uh, because there's so much land mass and so much ability to grow. Uh, Canada is a fair country, a country that respects the rights of women uh, and the rights of women are promoted and protected. Uh, as you may have heard, the current Premier of Canada has made it his commitment to have it, to um, lead a government in which there are 50% women on the on the senior positions of ministers versus 50% of men. Um, and when he was challenged why he had chosen this uh, gender parity, I don't know that you may have heard that uh, that short answer was because we live in the 21st century. Um, so uh, visible minorities of whatever nature are also protected and there's a great deal of commitment to promoting equity, diversity and inclusion, and not only in the entire society, but also specifically in our universities. Now I can't, we lost the presentation. Yeah, we lost the presentation. Uh, probably Ed, Adrian had the technical. Adrian, can you, is he trying yeah. to get that back? I, I can. I can try to share it from my side. I know I Adrian, know. Adrian sent it to me now. That will be one solution unless he appears now. Yeah, I don't know where he, okay. <laughs> I don't know where we are. Yeah, I will, I, will, I will try to get it now, but I want to get this last version to make sure yeah. I open the last version. Yeah. I can... Um, I have it here. Uh, are, are you back, Adrian? Sure. I'm back. I'm very, I'm very sorry. sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just... I will be back up. I found the... But you were, you were interrupted, Adrian? Was that the, the reason? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, next one. Yeah. Good. Next next one, Adrian, from that. Go on. Okay. So uh it's Canada obviously is also uh no 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 go back, go back. That was too fast. Okay, Canada is a very much a multicultural society and very consciously so. We talked about the high level of immigration and it, it's always stunning to me. I remember in, in a big meeting at my former university, uh, we welcomed a group of, of senior uh, representatives of a German university in that case. We had about 14 professors and administrators in the room that looked around counted and not a single person and on the Canadian side was actually born in Canada. We were all came from somewhere. Uh, and that is the sense here that uh, everybody comes from somewhere and uh, brings our, the, his or her traditions and beliefs and, and culture and language. And that is all respected and, and granted freedom and granted freedom of expression. Uh, we have strong population growth, uh, the strongest in, in all G7 countries, um, and the mostly that population growth is driven by immigration. Um, most prevalent countries of origin are F the Philippines, uh, India, and China. Uh, we have uh, here in London, one of the largest per capita Muslim communities in Ontario. London has for a long time been a center for Muslims to, to aggregate and come together. And so it was London where the first mosque was built in 1964. The first mosque that was purposeful, purposely built in Canada was built here in, in, in London. And we have a large Muslim community of, of various origins. Um, Chris, Egyptian Christians uh, also play a very large role here in, in London. And, and there's a Coptic church, uh, St. Paul's church, that is a Coptic Orthodox church uh, uh, for the Coptic community. Uh, next one. 
Uh, higher education, as I said, is the pride of Canada. We have excellent schools and excellent uh, universities. I, I, I mentioned my son, we lived in, and he went to school in Germany, the United States and Canada. Um, so we have a bit of a, our own ability to compare and there was no doubt in our minds that Canada offers by far the best quality of schools. And as my son said it, the school in Canada was challenging, but also nice, as opposed to the school in Germany where he said it was challenging, but not so nice. And the school in New York City, which was nice, but not very challenging. So Canada really in many, many ways is the best of all worlds uh, and uh, has a, a wonderful blend of opportunities and traditions to offer. We have uh, 1.4 million students in Canadian universities, so a large student population compared to our our overall population that is because we have one of the highest participation rates in higher education uh, in the world in fact um, and also our quality uh, of institutions both at school level and at university level is is top uh, Canada's uh, schools in fact in the PISA studies that the OECD undertakes come to typically always out as the top amongst the top five countries in the world for quality of schools, which I have to say is also a reason why our standards in the universities are so high. And in fact, international students have a bit of catch up to do because, you know, students, Canadian students come so relatively well prepared into, into universities. Uh, Canada spends more money per student in higher education than any other country in the world, which is why we have such a beautiful, and extremely well-equipped universities that we are very, very proud of. Our campus here at London, in, in London is spectacular. Next one. Um, and in recent years, Canada has also become the most popular country for international students to move to. Our growth rate in terms of our ability to attract 20 stu international students is 20%. And you can compare that to the United States with 3% or indeed any other country in the world that doesn't even remotely uh, grow at that, at that level. Uh, next one. Um, so that is also showing in where we are in terms of international students as relative to the total student body. Uh, it's high, it's not as high as in Australia and New Zealand. And frankly, we don't want to push it that way. We, we do want to make sure that our universities offer a good mix of Canadian students and international students. We don't want our international students to only hang out with international students. They should really be able to get to know and, and make friends with Canadian students. So our idea is probably heading for about 20%. Uh, so next one, London, I already mentioned, is a super pleasant city and, and I should have said that people, and I, I can totally understand even having been here only for a year, it is enormously livable city. It's obviously not as cold as other parts of Canada because we are really uh, much, uh, really relatively south. It's the southernmost major city in Canada. We have more than, we have a population of 400,000, so very manageable, uh, more than 200 parks. It's an extremely green city, um, even in the, in the living, the residential quarters, even in the downtown area, it is a park-like feeling everywhere in the city. Um, it's a big city, but it's uh, very manageable. Um, and it's definitely more affordable so, uh, than some of the very big cities such as Vancouver or Toronto or Montreal. Um, very good healthcare and education facilities um, and great climate, as I have mentioned. We, we move on to the next one. Uh, here is our location and you, you can see how far more in the South we are than most of the other places in Canada. We really are more like where New York City is or, or or certainly Detroit, which is very close, or Chicago. That is the kind of weather that you can expect here. Yes, we have winters, but they're they're not they don't last six months. Uh, they last two or three months, and uh, the summers are actually quite hot. Uh, so uh, you're going to feel very comfortable here 
you are able to experience winter. You are certainly able to travel to places in Ontario that offer excellent skiing opportunities. And so there's also great uh, uh, opportunities for uh, sports and the great outdoors with all the lakes around us. Uh, it's a wonderful place to live. Um, we are having a little video here that we're going to show you now for our university. Uh, and again, if you just want to push the button, we can enjoy the beautiful pictures. We don't have the sound. Okay, uh -oh. hey, I think we need to do this again because you don't hear the sound, Arian. Just one second while we're the sound. My Western experience has been unforgettable. Exciting. Extraordinary. My Western experience has been the best. I love the culture at Western. Between the social experiences, the classes. You're exposed to a huge range of topics to study. And then we apply it in real life scenarios. That is the beauty of being in this program. You need that practical experience. And the opportunity to go on exchange. I'm able to see the world in a completely different way. Western is so student-centered. You have a sense of belonging, like it's your family. Everyone has focused focused on helping me succeed. I get to work alongside some of the brightest professors. I feel confident that I will be able to step out into the real world. Student experience at Western is undoubtedly one of the best in Canada. From great faculties, quality athletics, clubs, extracurriculars, Western has it all. Your experience will never be the same as anybody else. I wanted to go to a school where I could make a difference and really get to expand my horizons and basically live out a dream. It's full of opportunities. An experience that's just so enriching. There's always something there for you. So just a little, um, a little impression. Sorry, the transmission wasn't perfect, but uh, I hope this uh, feels a little inspiring. Uh, wherever I go in Canada, I meet Western alumni. It's amazing, and and, and everybody will immediately self-identify as a Western alumnus or alumna because they're so proud. Western is a very special place. It's a community space. It's not a big city. It's a city where the university is really the center of attention. And it's, it's a university that marks people, that is, leaves a, a lasting impression. People feel very emotional, very attached to this place and to the university. Um, can we go on? Uh, just a few uh, tidbits on facts. Uh, we are amongst the top 1% at universities in the world. It's definitely one of Canada's most beautiful campuses. Uh, we have about 40,000 students from 128 countries. We are a member of the U15, that is the elite group of the top research intensive universities in Western. And we make a special commitment, a commitment that I have seen in no other university to caring for our students, for the student services and student well-being. Uh, Western is well known to offer the best in student services and in student uh, uh, accommodation, residence spaces, uh, food, uh, all of that is, is really at, a, at an exceptional level here at Western. Uh, we have obviously global learning opportunities. We will help you find opportunities to go abroad if that is part of what you would like to do for a certain period of time. We're certainly gonna help you with internships. And of course, uh, that may also, even at a PhD level, be, be an interesting opportunity. So um, that is certainly part of what we are committing to, to our international students. Next one. Um, again, uh, here's the ranking positions. Uh, we are particularly proud on the fact that we ranked number 26 in the world from, for the time higher education uh, impact rankings. That is the rankings that measure uh, the commitment of a university to promoting the uh, sustainable development goals and, and making a difference in terms of uh, creating a more sustainable and healthy future for all. And Western has a very strong track record in, in that regard. 
Uh, next one. Uh, research strengths, what, what are we particularly good at? Of course, you know, that is always very, very hard to capture uh, because there's so much going on. I, uh, you can never be really up to date with all the expertise and all the opportunities that our university offers. The three big areas where we have uh, interdis large interdisciplinary research centers are neurosciences, bone and joint, that is kind of uh, kinesiology, uh, that is orthopedic surgery, that is uh, uh, mechanical engineering as it serves uh, the body to, Im to heal and, and, and be mobile after injuries. So uh, all of that area and then space, uh, a really exciting and, and, uh, and attractive area. We are one of the leaders in Canada in space sciences. Uh, but also beyond that, there are many, many other areas of, of excellence. Uh, there is WINDI, uh, that is Dr. Ashraf's uh, uh, field, uh, where we are looking at, at wind and how it affects uh, building structures, but also at creating wind energy and natural disaster management, unfortunately an area of growing importance. That is another big strength here. Uh, business and management, we have the Ivy School of Business, which is ranked the number one MBA school in Canada. Uh, and it's amongst the top MBA schools in, in North America. We are a, a, a medical university in many ways. Uh, medicine and health sciences are uh, extremely strong. Uh, and that's not only true for the university, but it's also true for the city. The city has a very strong a uh, track record of uh, providing excellent health services. And we have people from everywhere in the world come here uh, to undergo medical treatment. Uh, we uh, are strong in climate change mitigation and adaptation, water research, air pollution, remote sensing is an area of strength here too. Um, next one. Uh, it is a safe and welcoming uh, environment for all the Mustangs are our sports teams. And uh, that is important as you may have heard for all North American universities, we're very proud. And again, the campus is just stunningly beautiful, of course, particularly this time of the year. And it's lovely to see my office is actually, you see that glass building there on the, on the, on the slide in the photo with, can you go back for a moment, Adrian? You see that uh, the building with the big tree and on the left side, there is a glass. That is our building. And I have actually have the view of that big green space. And it's fantastic to see every day how students make use of that space and, and their play games, their hangout and, and uh, talk to each other or play music or just chat. There's always life on that on that space on that green space. It's it's wonderful to see. It's what a university should be. It's almost like your ideal university setting. Okay, go on. Um, now we're talking about engineering, which is obviously one of the pillars here at Western University. Is really a a great area of pride. We just added a wonderful new building, but we're already about to plan the next one. So uh, engineering is here to grow and, and to become an even bigger part of our profile. Uh, here's the, special, the various uh, specialities that we offer. Uh, and uh, you know, there's, there's definitely uh, even more expansion now uh, with a view to a big integ integrated research center between engineering and the health sciences. So where engineering comes together with health, that's gonna be one of our focus areas in the future. Next one. Adrian? Okay. Medical sciences, health sciences all together. We have a fa faculty of medicine and we have a faculty of health sciences. That is quite unusual that we have such extended range of health uh, of, of, uh, sciences beyond medicine. Um, and uh, you're seeing here what medicine offers, but we also do nursing, of course, we do kinesiology, we do a very strongly, uh, we have a very strong program in public health, including a very successful master's program in public health. Next one. Um, you're not going to be alone. 
here, you're going to have a community of, of professors and students from Egypt. This is not even the comprehensive list. This is a few of the most of the faces, but not all of the faces of our our professors here at uh, at Western who have an Egypt Egyptian background. Uh, and you can see they're mostly in, in the medical sciences and in engineering. And Dr. Ashraf is uh, appropriately so at the head of the list. Uh, he is really one of our st star scholars. He's very he's very modest, but you 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 know, you're, you're talking to with somebody who is 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 a fantastic leader and well known in all of Canada, and as you heard, well respected too. Um, so we are very proud to have him. And the next one is showing you uh, the number of Egyptian students, and you show that we're growing. Um, and uh, we look forward to having more of you. And hopefully, some of you are listening now in, and uh, we'll we'll decide to come and join us here. And, and make the, uh, the Egyptian student community grow even more. Uh, most, it's, it's, it's 50, 50 almost between uh, students, uh, Egyptian students who are undergraduates and grads and a, and a few uh, medical residents too. Um, what is important to talk about for you um, is the Western sponsored student program. And this is uh, what Adrian uh, does for a living. And um, he's running this. We've just created this program, but we are, we are having a unit that does nothing but work specifically for students who come from with sponsorship from their home, com com home country. So that, that unit is a, a one-stop shop for sponsors and for their students. Um, and uh, we will assist you with placement. So that is super important. Uh, if you need help finding the appropriate supervisor, if, or if you don't really know that we offer what you are looking for, you can contact Adrian and Adrian will guide you and help you. Um, he will also uh, provi provide help and assistance when, when you decided to join Western and you want to apply, you know, he will help. He will always be available for all your questions. You don't have to do the runaround in the university to find the right person to talk to. Adrian is the right person to talk to and he will do the runarounds for you. Um, there's specialized assistance that Adrian can connect you to for immigration purposes. If you need the advice and information of what of any of your immigration needs, uh, we have experienced immigration advisors who are licensed, uh, quite a few of them. So you will have access to those services. Uh, you have uh, access with course selection program building, as I said, either to Adrian or you know people that Adrian will connect you to. And we have assistance with reporting back to sponsors so that the sponsors always know and can can help when needed. Uh, and uh, we're doing that 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 connection. Uh, we're going to build that connection too, if necessary. Um, your uh, we, we saw initially the uh, the priority research areas uh, that the, your country your government has, has set out for building progress and, and prosperity in, in Egypt. And uh, we tick them all, the, all of them, except for agriculture. We don't have a faculty of agriculture. Most universities in Ontario don't because we have one university that offers agriculture. So um, we uh, don't do agriculture, but we do food sciences. So we have, we, we can cover that to a certain extent too. But all the other areas, you find ample expertise here and ample uh, pro program options uh, for all those fields. And again, I, I've mentioned Adrian's name now uh, a number of times here is his contact information any specific questions that you have, any need for help that you might have, he is the go-to person and he will do what he can and will call others in if whatever he can do is not enough. So uh, very glad to have him. Uh, and we hope that you will decide uh, to, uh, on, on Western. And if you do, we are sure that you're gonna have a wonderful time here and that you're gonna be set up for success in your future careers.
Thank you, uh, Professor Preta and Professor Ashraf Damati, for this wonderful presentation about Western. And I think a lot of our scholars now is very excited to join you in Western. And uh, for now, we will open the question and uh, answer um, session. But can we, Dr. Ahmed, can we have uh, uh, our students, uh, Safwat and Shaima, to say a few things? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So uh, please uh, can, can, can share, share with the students their experience. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay, so maybe soft what? Uh... Yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Start now. Go ahead, Saf. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, Ramadan Karim at first. I'm Safwa Ramadan, a PhD candidate in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at Western University. My field of specialty is geotechnical engineering. Throughout my uh, five minutes of talk, I'll, be, I'll, I'll try to cover five main points. First is how I joined Western. Uh, in 2013, I was assigned as a teaching assistant uh, at Cairo University in Egypt. I got my master's uh, degree in 2016. I had lots of opportunities uh, and offers to stay in Egypt and start my PhD studies besides working in the industry. However, I always had this dream of uh, experiencing uh, studying abroad. So one of the top scholars in my field of study is Professor uh, El Nagar of Western University. While I was wrapping up my thesis, which was approximately as far as I remember is early 2015, I decided to contact Professor El Nagar uh, so I sent him an email uh, requesting a full scholarship, with co which covers my tuition fees and uh, living expenses. You have to keep in mind that uh, professors receive hundreds of emails on a daily basis. So you have to, uh, your email that you send must be very attractive. It gives the first impression, which is very important. So it should be professional, uh, very well written and precise. You first have to introduce yourself uh, you research work qualifications. Why are you interested in joining his or her uh, research group? And what topics are you actually interested in uh, in your research study? One other important point is to clarify what type of funding you are requesting. For my case, I received the response from Professor El Nagar, and he we made a virtual interview after which I was directly welcomed to his uh, research group. So I completed my application to West and I got the admission. The second point I'd like to cover here is the knowledge. When I joined Western in 2016, I had the opportunity to enhance my knowledge through the offered graduate courses in my field. Very strong courses, excellent instructors. Uh, I have to admit that some of these courses are very heavy, but at the end they are very useful and practical. Uh, at Western, you also have the option of taking like credit or uh, audit courses. So this is actually a good opportunity as well. Uh, let's move to the third point, which is about research. The main objective of my research is to develop design guidelines for large span three-sided culverts to be included in the future version of the uh, Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code. My research includes full-scale field testing, which costs a fortune, if you know, it costs lots of money. Being part of Western and under the supervision of an esteemed uh, professor, like Professor Nagar, we were able to receive funding from three different funding organizations and industrial partners, which of course reflects the importance of the study and uh, its practicality, but more importantly, it reflects the trust uh, of the industrial partners on these organizations in uh, Western. Our field work uh, cost over, was over uh, quarter million dollars, which is quite uh, a lot, lots of money for one research. Then we came to the stage of laboratory testing, which is when I recognized the unique facilities we have at Western, excellent soil and structural labs. For example, we recently had a $5 million centrifuge machine. Of course, the availability of these labs and the equipment facilitates the research work and produces high quality uh, research. Fourth is the point of teaching. I claim that I came to Western with a very good teaching experience. I had been teaching soil mechanics and foundations design at uh, Cairo University for three years. At, West, at Western, it was a, a different teaching experience though. 
As a graduate student, you have uh, a, an opportunity to enhance your teaching experience. Uh, for my case, uh, I have been teaching a first year uh, engineering course called Innovative Engineering Design, which is very similar to STEM schools in Egypt, if you know anything about that. The students are given a specific problem for which they have to use the engineering design method to come up with a solution and build a prototype. So it has been a, a very good experience for me teaching such a creative course. So you will be exposed to different uh, teaching methods, different uh, learning experience as a, as a teaching assistant actually. Fifth and last point, which is beyond the learning and knowledge, uh, Western is new, unique by its uh, cultural diversity as Professor Pritta mentioned. You will have colleagues from all around the world. You will be exposed to different cultures. Uh, for me personally, I believe that uh, the benefits I gained uh, from such exposure is not any less than the scientific benefits I gained throughout my years at uh, Western. So my dear friends, that concludes my uh, talk and I will pass it to, to my uh, colleague, Shema. Thank you, Safwa. Thank you, Safwa. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like uh, to share my experience at Western University and London City. I'm a PhD candidate uh, in structure and wind engineering at the University of Rankin among top universities in Canada and the world. Uh, actually, I'm here on a scholarship from uh, the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education, Mission Sector, uh, and I chose Western University because of its scholarly uh, reputation and academic excellence. Uh, this excellence actually can be interpreted through the uh, existence of specialists uh, and the unique research facilities such as Windy and the Boundary Layer Wind Tunnel, the first of their kind in the world, uh, and the comprehensive expertise held by uh, the department professors and their published peer-reviewed uh, papers in this area are valuable assets to my research actually. A PhD journey usually starts with uh, contacting a potential supervisor uh, after making sure that his expertise and research areas match yours. In my opinion, this is the most important step. Uh, that is uh, why it is important to pay much attention to your first contact with a potential supervisor. Usually professors receive, uh, as I said, tons of emails from graduate students every year. So it is recommended to focus on your academic and research strengths. You can also mention that you have potential funding. This is very important. Uh, in my case, I contacted my uh, supervisor, uh, Professor Ashraf, before applying to the missions scholarship. Uh, and I was lucky to have in-person interview with him in Egypt and uh, get his acceptance on uh, my research proposal. After being accepted on the scholarship and before arriving in Canada, the missions department and the culture bureau in Montreal uh, did their best to overcome uh, any rising issues. On day one at Western, the registration and signing up for medical insurance, etc., took just a few minutes and the department and university staff were very friendly and helpful. They provide every possible to help uh, solve problems and answer inquiries. Uh, also the diversity of courses offered here in my department allowed me to acquire priceless knowledge on wind engineering and the structure mechanics uh, in a specific. Also Western Teaching and Learning Center offer a variety of developmental courses designed for TAs and faculty. Actually, I am a TA in Egypt and also I am a TA here in Western. Uh, and these courses prepare you for excellence in teaching and academia. And they also develop your communication and leadership skills. The second point I'd like to talk about is London. It's a beautiful city, combines the features of big cities uh, and small ones. You can find everything you need in a big city, such as uh, specialized hospitals, malls, and parks. And also you will enjoy the quietness of uh, suburban. Uh, and all requirements to settle here take only a few days. 
uh, and just by phone or email and all facilities are actually available. Uh, the city also combines the number of halal food groceries and restaurants and London has many Arabs and Egyptians, so you don't feel much homesickness actually. Uh, and at the end, I encourage all my colleagues in Egypt to do their best to get admitted here. It is competitive but worthy. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Safat. Thank you, Shayma, for this uh, good uh, introduction to the Western experience. And now we will uh, go for the question and answer um, session. So, okay, for the first question from uh, Noha, she asked about a PhD program and animation program. Is there an animation program in uh, Western? I know this is a visual art, but I, I, uh, I Probably, I, I know that we have very strong media school. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably animation will be part of the media school. Yeah, yeah. it's called it MIT, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have a, we have a, a faculty for, for media studies. So I would be confident that they uh, offer animation. OK. But we can research that and, and provide more detailed information. Depends um, on his look as animation from an artistic point of view or imaging. Imaging can be part of science, but likely I think it's media. I know yeah. about the visual, uh, the visual arts. I think there is a yeah. visual art in uh, Western. Yeah, and, and we have visual art at Western. Yeah. Uh, okay. Agent, so, can you take the, the uh, name and address so, uh, or the email address so we can uh, follow up with more specific? more information, okay. Uh, there's another question from Marwa. She asked about the public relation program or mass communication. So I think it is related to the similar program. Yeah, yeah, that will be the media program, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 it's quite a strong program at Western. Yeah. It's one of the best in Canada, um, one of the largest in yeah. Canada. Another question from uh, Nahid al Awati. She asked about uh, geophysics, science, or, uh, or oil or gas engineering in Western. We have also, uh, like anything geo, probably this is software, software is geo, geo uh, geotechnical, but uh, geophysics probably will be more on the earth science department. It's part of faculty of science. And also it's quite strong at Western. So I encourage uh, contacting or connecting with the Department of Earth Science at Western. Yeah, just uh, to add on what uh, Professor Damati uh, said, so I know that uh, we have a very strong and very big project uh, in the Earth Science Department where they are doing what's called microzonation of uh, Vancouver. So they are assessing and doing some work to uh, determine the, seismic, the seismicity of uh, Vancouver City. So we have a very strong work there as well. Okay. And we have recently hired a professor in geotechnical, he's specializing in, in seismology and, and uh, geology. He's MIT graduate, and he will be definitely looking for students. He's very good. But it's also, it, it could also, uh, chemical engineering could also be relevant right, on, on, the, on the refining side and Yes, chemical engineering on the refining side. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But since she mentioned JU, I thought it was more related to earth science and geotechnical. Mm -hmm. uh, and Ahmed asking about dentistry. Is there a dentistry school in uh, Western? Yes, oh, sure. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, quite strong. Yeah, okay. I know uh, many professors there. If, she, if she's the, interested, I can help with that. Yeah. As usual, about the IELTS and if there is any exception for the IELTS score or our uh, uh, additional acceptance. Uh, maybe, so. maybe Adrian wants to talk to that. Hmm? Adrian, I'll score, English language score. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we do have um, many tests that we actually accept because I saw that the question was in the chat box. Uh, we do accept um, TOEFL, IELTS, um, MELEP, 
Um, and we have all the information also posted um, in our graduate um, admissions page. But in general terms for um, TOEFL, IBT, or IELTS that are the most popular, you're looking at a, a score min minimum score of 86 for TOEFL uh, with no score below 20. And for IELTS, um, you're looking at a 6.5 on the nine point scale uh, with no band below six. So, so the student can get a conditional acceptance before, um, so he can fulfill the requirement of the English before they start the program directly, or he cannot get this conditional acceptance? Uh, as far as I know, uh, you, you, we, we don't have conditional acceptance. Like the, the student should satisfy the language requirement first to get accepted in the program. Okay. Only thing we have is that some students from some countries they come and spend one year studying English or six months, and they are asked to achieve a certain uh, a grade, and if they do, they can join the program. But uh, I don't think that the Egyptian government would fund that. So I really encourage you to to do your best to get the, to pass the English proficiency exam. Having said that, we have uh, the Western English Language Program, and in fact, Dr. Baisley is the director. He's not only the director of international recruitment, but he's also the director of the, the English Language Program. So if for students who feel that they need additional support, uh, as Dr. Ashraf said, it's not covered by, by your scholarship, but we are certainly able to offer such support. Yeah. Um... A lot of students ask about uh, Adrian uh, email. I think uh, Professor Kretta I think it's in the chat. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, in I the chat. It's, yeah, yeah. And I think. Chat. And, and I've answered some questions as well with my email address. I'll, I'll post it again um, for everybody. Yeah, maybe you can put it again. Yeah. Yep. No worries. Uh, there is some question asking about uh, the disabled students' facility. So the facilities are from Western for disabled students. Brita, you want? Yes, we have, um, I think I mentioned in my presentation that we are uh, proud to have probably the best uh, student engagement and student experience uh, programming in all of Canada. So, and one of their pillars is, is uh, special support for students with disadvantages. Um, be it uh, physical disadvantages or even other, other issues that uh, will uh, limit their ability to uh, access higher education fully. So I, you know, there's a whole range of, of individualized or even broader programming. Uh, and the campus is built in a way that will allow as much as possible in a campus that is 150 years old almost, uh, is, is that, you know, we, we've made uh, great efforts to make this uh, uh, easily accessible. But if the, you know, whatever special issues there are, I think Adrian can, can provide then more specific answers. Um, and please, please uh, let him know what you need to know. Uh, there is another question from Gihad asking about a program related to physical therapy uh, medicine field. Yes, indeed, that's actually one of our strengths. Uh, this is this is the health uh, sciences faculty, and we have both uh, a graduate program for physical therapy, uh, but we also have an undergraduate program in kinesiology. Uh, so both at undergraduate and, and of course we also have graduate program in, in kinesiology. So there's a whole range. There's also occupational therapy, uh, speech therapy, all these uh, uh, f fields are, are well well represented at Western. It's actually one of uh, Western strengths. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, Aisha asking about if there is another scholarship program provided from Western directly, not from the Ministry of Higher Education in Egypt. You have a yeah. certain, uh, de de definitely program. like most of my students are funded from my my research. Uh, Southwood is funded by Dr. Nagar Research, so we provide a lot of uh, support, uh, financial support for for international students. Uh, yeah, we don't have a scholarship program as such for graduate students. Mm -hmm. We do have one for undergraduate now, but but not for graduate at the moment. Um, for international, but but as, as Dr. Ashraf said, it's. 
it's the individual professors and their research funds, particularly in science and engineering, but also health sciences and medicine. Typically, we are able, if somebody really shows all the talent and, and the achievements that we need to see, we are able and willing to help with, with funding where, you know, where, where possible. It's, it's not quite as easy for the social sciences and the humanities, I will have to, to say. The, the government also, there are some scholarships for distinguished international students in Canada in general. So we had something called NSERC Vanier. I had a few of my students recipient yeah. of that. And this is big money. They mm -hmm. make uh, close to $60,000 per year tax-free, probably better than an assistant professor after deducting taxes. And we have something else called Trillium scholarships. Also some of our students were successful in getting. Uh, this one is order of $40,000. So uh, there are different means, uh, but uh, most of those scholarships would come from the professor funding. Yeah. Uh, so I um, see, uh, okay. so, sorry, Professor Ahmed, I see like some questions regarding uh, how to uh, know the supervisor and who, what, what is the field of research? So Western have a very uh, good website online. So if you go to the website, every department, you will see all the professors of the department, uh, their contact information, their field of uh, work. So you will see what type of actually studies uh, they are focusing on. So you can, through the website, know what supervisors you need to contact, and you will find the contact uh, information, as I mentioned, and you decide based on your uh, whatever study you want to go with, you will determine which supervisor actually to contact. Okay, uh, I think a lot of students start to ask about their particular specialist. Uh, so I encourage them to search through Western website as well as um, looking for the ministry uh, call because um, in the ministry call, you'll find that it, they, they divided the call into sectors, research sector. There's a sector for energy, sector for water treatment, sector for nanotechnology. So yes. I can share with the students a PDF file uh, that uh, in Arabic that includes uh, mission sectors that related to the, the current call. Okay. Dr. Ahmed, I can, I can comment on a few of them quickly that I see. I, I, I see uh, Amani asked about the Faculty of Education, yes. We have, okay. I think, very strong program, PhD program in Faculty of Education at Worcester. Uh, I can see hey, Dr. some- Dr. Basic, maybe he, is, uh, he, he worked with the Faculty of Education. Yeah. Maybe uh, Dr. That's Basic right. can talk a little bit about a Faculty of Education. I absolutely can, because I didn't hear the question. I was answering all the questions in the text. <laughs> in the, text so. the question was what, what kind of PhD programming we have in the Faculty of Education. Absolutely. So the Faculty of Education has a few strengths. One is in, in educational psychology. So there's a PhD program for a educational psychology. We also have a lot of strength in applied linguistics. So folks who are wanting to study the, act, the language acquisition, uh, particularly in reading. There is a, also a focus on curriculum studies, which is uh, a, a broader range of in, with specialties in math, uh, and in literature and French studies. So applied linguistics is another piece of that. And uh, lastly, we also offer a number of programs in applied behavior analysis. So that is dealing with students who have autism. So those are the programmatic strengths. And my apologies, the last one is also educational leadership. There's a, we have a doctoral degree in educational leadership as well as a PhD program in educational leadership. And that is primarily geared to uh, uh, students who are or, uh, who are going to be in the ki uh, kindergarten to grade twelve sector. Yeah, I think uh, asking about education uh, administration. And so, so that would be our leadership program, um, Ashraf. So, so yeah. uh, students generally that is where the students come from, coming from the administrative ranks would be going into the, either the PhD or the doctoral degree. Yeah. Advanced manufacturing program, yes, part of mechanical engineering. So I, I speak French, so I see something in French. Didiatique du Fleu, French language program. 
so Brita are from, I think we, we have a strong also department of French here. You are, you are muted, yeah. Brita, you are we, muted. We, we, uh, sir, we, we do have a strong program in French in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities. Yeah. Um, and and uh, th there's, a, there's a lot of strength there. And it's actually as a, as a level of uh, programmatic uh, coordination with the Faculty of Education. So there's French education as well. So there's opportunities for the pedagogy of teaching French as well as French studies. Um, if, I, if I could in, interrupt for a second, uh, Professor Aldamati, it seems to me that there's a lot of questions going around about dentistry. Now, our faculty of dentistry is actually called the Shudok School of Medicine and Dentistry. So if you are Googling it, it's the Shudok School of Medicine and Dentistry. That is, uh, Shudok was a, a benefactor of Western and, and uh, he did so well that they named the school after him. So if you are Googling that, the keywords are Shudok School of Medicine and Dentistry. I've been sending out that link in a number of different link uh, posts. Okay. I see uh, somebody asking very important question. Should I mention I am self-funded through the education missions? Yes, very important. <laughs> then the professor won't miss your email. Uh, yeah, I, but I definitely, can, you, you, can help help them to to introduce our student to the professor in Western. And now Adrian know well about the process, so he can introduce the process to the professor in Western. So it will be my easier for the professor to understand the process because the difficulty here is uh, when the student uh, send to the professor before he gets the fund, he said initially in order to submit his proposal to the CDM website, he should get uh, initial uh, approval for the proposal from the professor in Western. So he asked the professor to review his proposal and to send him initial acceptance for this proposal in order to submit to the website or the CDM and uh, submit his document to the, the call. So I think this is a little bit confusion for the professors that when they ask him, you have a fund? He said, no, I still, I still not have a fund, but I will get the fund after the review process. So maybe it's a little bit confusing for this so professor to send him a, a acceptance before he gets the fund. Yeah. But this, uh, yeah. like, but like, uh, many, this is like many, an academic approval, not, uh, not um, admission approval, yeah. Yeah, but this is the system at many countries, like, like, like the, the Chinese scholarships, the scholarship in different countries is the same. So professors who had the international students, I think they are now used to this. That uh, it's two stages. Uh, but if I may, uh, Dr. Ahmed, to add uh, some other points uh, concerning the uh, the other side of the evaluation, let me say it this way: How we evaluate the participants to give them the scholarship from our admission department? As you know, there is two different evaluations happening for the uh, participant. The first one is the technical evaluation to the proposal submitted by the participant to have this scholarship. So if he passed the, the, initial, the, uh, the initial evaluation, which depends on also on the acceptance he already brought or the initial acceptance he already provided uh, to the committee, uh, that would be an ads on for him. Uh, in the personal interview with the participant himself, we usually evaluate the um, hosting university we evaluate the index of the professor he's going to work with. And these are considered into the, the scores of the um, evaluation itself. So this is the point we are explaining from the reviewer's point of view to the participant even before he submit his proposal. And that's why he's pushing a little bit on the hosting professors to give them more justifications uh, for his scholarship. I have to clear this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rishan. Uh, I think there is another question for how I can get a PhD funded from Western University or from a professor in Western. Is there a specific requirements? I think it depends as uh, Dr. Ashraf Damati say, uh, it depends on the staff member in Western. If, I, if they have external fund and they, 
can find you. It depends on your CV and your skills or when you submit your documents, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Let me say something here, Dr. Ahmed. There are two points I want to clarify. From, from me as a professor, how I see it, uh, having so many Egyptian students. I, I wouldn't accept student with scholarship from Egypt unless I would admit these students to be fully funded by myself. So when I took Shaima, I was planning to support her, regardless if she would get the scholarship or not. So that's, that's my philosophy. So it doesn't mean that the students is coming with scholarship that personally, I would um, decide right away to accept the student. I have to be convinced that he or she is the right student for my research team. So this is very important. And definitely there are a lot of talents in Egypt. So, so many of them would be qualified for that. The second point regarding the scholarship, I think uh, if uh, personal contact is very important. If you get a chance to contact the professor and convince the professor about your qualifications in terms of grades and in terms of research, this will make a big difference. Some, an advice that I want to pass on to the Egyptian students, try to publish papers from your master. This is a key thing. This is something that somehow is missing a little bit in the Egyptian students. And the IFCs, other countries are pushing that very much. Give you an example. I see students from Iran, they come with two, three publications out of their master degree. A publication from your master in international journals is going to open all the doors for you together with your good grades. OK, thank you, Dr. Asha, for this clarification. Can I maybe make a short uh, remark? Because I see also questions about master programs. Um, I just want to explain that there are masters and masters. There's master program that is a master that leads to a research degree um, and is, is organized as a research degree. But there are also masters that are course-based and we call them sometimes you know, professional masters. Those are masters where all the courses are being taught um, and research is not the key focus of the program, but teaching a specific uh, specialized content is the, the key focus. Uh, you know, Western is, is, is very proud to have about 30 uh, course-based master's programs and you can find them online. Uh, and we, we're very proud and, and particularly also in engineering, we have a whole range of uh, course-based masters that lead to the MEng, uh, and uh, you you might want to be uh, interested in those as well if you are looking for programming at master's level. level. Those, whoever I have to say, are fairly. Uh, there's no, uh, for, for PhD students, we usually only charge domestic fees. For master students, we charge um, international differential fees. So fees that are fairly significant, I will have to, to confess. Okay. Uh, I think um, in Egypt, they prefer the master with students because um, when they go back to Egypt, uh, and go to the Supreme Council in Egypt, they, they got um, like the equivalent degree, the equivalent master's degree from Egypt in order to continue their work in their university pair. But in Egypt, they, they, they all only um, approve the master by thesis, not um, applied masters or Kind of PhD. I, I know even in PhD, there is different kinds of PhD, even in UK, PhD by thesis, PhD by research, yeah, yeah. and any, any other type of PhD. So always in Egypt, they get approval for the master or the PhD by thesis only. This might be a little bit difficult for students to get back to their work if they don't have this degree. Yeah. Okay, uh, his other question is there is any post uh, PhD programs available for the air science major as the Western? For air science? Definitely. Yeah, air science definitely there, there will be, but postdoc are relatively costly for the, for the professor to support unless they come with their own support because the salary is definitely higher than a PhD. So to get a postdoc, you need to have a good CV. I I'm, I'm telling you the truth. So you need to 
to do very well in your PhD and publish well in your PhD. If you do that, it will open the doors for you for a postdoc. I think we have about 300 postdoc positions at the university. The big bulk are in the three interdisciplinary research centers that I, you know, that were mentioned in my, my presentation, Bone and Joint, Neurosciences and Space. Uh, particularly neurosciences has a, a large number of postdoc positions. And then, you know, throughout the universities, university we have, and we actually, the university has just decided to make additional funding available, but that will not change uh, what you know the 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 statements that that Dr. Dalamari made it is very selective and very hard. It's quite competitive, yeah. I, I have currently two postdocs, and I I tend often to offer postdoc for my own students. So sometimes students who came from mission with a scholarship, they ended up doing postdoc with me after that because they were very well trained. Uh, but if you look for a postdoc, my advice to you try to, to do uh, publish well from your PhD. Okay. There's a question about daycare, Safwat has kids. Yeah. <laughs> Can you comment on this? Yeah, I do have two kids, so what was they, the they, they go to daycare now or not? So they do go to daycare. Uh, I have to admit and confess that daycares here are very expensive. Um, however, for low income uh, students, and low income families in general, there's what we call the uh, child care subsidy. So the city of London provides a child care subsidy for uh, low income families to help support uh, them uh, dealing with their uh, students. And the, the main thing is that both parents should be working, either working or both parents are students or one as a student and the other is uh, working. So if you have your spouse is not working or not doing any studies, then you will not be eligible to take this uh, child care subsidy. But if both of you are students or both of you are working or one is working and another is a student, you would definitely be eligible to take uh, the child care subsidy, which covers the majority of <laughs> child care expenses and the daycare expenses. Yeah. If, if I could also comment on, on education uh, for children of, of international students. Right beside the university, we have a school called University Heights, which is primarily um, full of students whose parents are doing PhDs or master's degrees at Westerns. And so it is a vibrant, vibrant community. It scores extremely high on the PISA scores because these are students who are, whose parents have a very rich life and it's right beside the university campus. I don't think that's by design, but it certainly is a benefactor. So it is couched in between the international student residence and the university campus. And, and uh, so there's another uh, opportunity for students to gain some, uh, to learn in Canada as well. Uh, there's another good question asking about uh, the postdoctoral uh, uh, as well. If there is a minimum number of years or maximum number of years um, after that, the student cannot join Western as a postdoc? After he doing his PhD, the maximum is three years. Yeah. I think we did away with that, Ashraf. I, I just recently yeah. talked to to Linda Miller, the yeah. dean of grad studies, and yeah. I think we uh, there's no limit anymore because it, yeah. we looked at this as dis discrimination of women, uh, and we lifted that. Yeah, the, 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 the way the way we used to go around that is to hire them as research associates. Yeah. Okay. Which, but I think it's, it's even that limitation. Which is the same, but, but that, that makes sense. I was never happy with this limitation. I would, I would like to clarify that in the CDM call, uh, uh, the postdoctoral uh, position, they allow the uh, assistant, associate, even full professor to apply as a postdoctoral position. I know maybe in visa or maybe in Western, it, maybe the title a little bit different. Maybe they ask the professor to join as a visiting professor, not a boss, as a postdoc. But in CDM, they give him the letter as a postdoc or the scholarship as a, under the under the the scholar the postdoc uh, scholarship. So for six months, yeah, to do a research uh, abroad, yeah. So. Um, this is why the, some people ask about the age or about if he finished the PhD from 10 years ago or from 20 years ago. Is there a restriction on to get a, to, go, to come to Western as a postdoc? So apparently it's possible now, Brita, right? Yeah, it is possible. Okay. Honestly, you still need to be accepted by the professor. So the professor might be less interested if you, if you are 
PhD is a long time ago, but the, formally speaking, there is the, we lifted the, uh, the, uh, the you know the three year limit. Okay. I think we answer uh, most of the questions. Is there research, Egyptian research stuff in biochemistry at Western? Of course, yeah. There's lots of questions I saw on, on veterinary uh, science. No, we do not do veterinary science. Very few universities do veterinary medicine in, in Canada. It, it's one of the most expensive degree programs to run for a university. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, uh, there's only very few universities. Same is true for architecture. Mm -hmm. Very few. I think. Uh, if I may say, Calgary runs veterinary medicine and Guelph runs veterinary medicine, I assume, right? Matt? That's correct, in Saskatchewan as well. And Saskatchewan. And, and, and architecture is, again, I think Ryerson. Calgary, Ryerson, okay, Toronto? I don't know. I think, I think they have a school of architecture. Yeah. There was a question about maximum age for PhD. No, there isn't. I think it's uh, in, if kinesi kinesi kinesiology. Yes, kinesiology. Austin is big. Mm -hmm. There's there's four streams in the PhD of kinesiology program, and uh, I've been sending that link out to various people. So uh, I think Dr. Ashraf, I can share with you uh, all these questions um, if you can provide us with the answer from Western uh, side. And uh, I see also a lot of questions from maybe the answer will come from Mr. Hisham from the CDM department. So uh, I think uh, this is our end for our meeting today. And I would like to thank you all for attending today and especially thank to Western for their commitment and for this lovely introduction to the university. Uh, and I will leave the floor now for uh, Professor Ahmad Fauzi for uh, his work. Please, Professor Ahmad. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmad Hekel. Uh, thank you very much to all the guest uh, speakers uh, 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 who uh, gave us a lot of important uh, information to our Egyptian uh, scholars. Um, and I would like to wish you all uh, the best of luck and the best of uh, success. Thank you very much. Okay. So I, I, I want to put the Western website because somebody asked about the Western website. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much. We appreciated this opportunity. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed Fauzi. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed Haikal, for this opportunity. I am really, um, I, uh, frankly, I really admire the energy that the, the Bureau, Culture Bureau has uh, now and the efforts that you are putting. Um, I have been in this business for, for many years, uh, but uh, what I see happening now is, uh, is fantastic. Okay. And uh, we wish all the students all the best in their career. Uh, either they end up coming to Western or going to another Canadian universities or any university around the world. Uh, try to use this opportunity. You're gonna gain a lot from traveling abroad and spending a few years of your academic life abroad because as Safwad said, it is not only the scientific part, but it is the life experience that, that you, you will gain. Okay, thank you very much all and we wish you all the best. Okay, thank you very much uh, for everyone. Thank you, Western uh, University. We are looking uh, forward to have uh, more students joining U of Universities. And uh, I'll place the announcement uh, link in, in the chat for everyone. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hisham. And uh, please admit the students when they apply, when they put Western. <laughs> uh, well, we <laughs> But it's not a promise. <laughs> yeah. I, I know, I know. Okay. I'm, I'm that joking. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.